Welcome to Bamford Rose and another question of the week. In this week's question of the week, we discuss, is it better to buy your used Aston Martin at a lower price, but with higher miles, or go for the lower mileage car, but a higher price? Stay tuned as I take you through a few examples of higher miles, lower price, and lower miles and higher price. Before we get into those examples, my first piece of advice is make sure at point of purchase the paint is good and the interior is good. The escalating costs of paint and materials is eye-watering. So if your car is badly stone rashed at point of purchase, then having a respray is going to be really expensive and time consuming. Also trimming. I mean, trimming is a bit like stained glass windows these days. It's a dying art. There aren't many decent trimmers left. So at point of purchase, if the paint's looking a bit stone rashed, if the trim is suffering the leather shrink that they all seem to do on the top dash panel, on the driver's side and passenger side, maybe the rear environment is shrinking a little bit, then either factor in a lot of money for retrim or just walk away from that car. So let's have a look at the higher mile and lower priced car. So here I show a 2004 DB9. It's got 62,000 miles and it's up for £26,500. Now it proudly says that there's 21 stamps in the service book, but really this means absolutely nothing. What you want to be looking at are the notes from the mechanic on the service sheets. So these aren't some abbreviated service sheets with just tick boxes in a traffic light status sort of diagram. You want actually the raw notes that the technician wrote down when he was servicing the car. If you can't see that in the history of the car, then you need a pre-purchase inspection. So without a pre-purchase inspection, without the notes, of a technician on the service sheets, then you really need to walk away from these higher mileage cars. They can really bite you if they need the repairs that at a certain mileage they all seem to do. Now, those sorts of things are gonna be like a radiator. Um, all of these DB9s are gonna need the radiator renewing. They were of a plastic end cap design originally and they've been superseded to a metal end cap. And a radiator is going to come in at about £1,200 supplied and fitted. At that sort of mileage, 62000 then you're really going to be looking to see in the history file that the aircon condenser and compressor have both been replaced. You're not going to have got a 62000 mile DB9 uh, up to that sort of mileage uh, without going through an aircon condenser and compressor. £1,500 will replace both of those two components. Also at 62,000 miles, then it's unlikely to be okay on all eight, so four lower, four upper suspension wishbone arms. So you really need to be seeing that there's history of the suspension wishbone arms being recently replaced. If not, then that job will come in at about £4,000 for all eight arms and the labour to fit. Door modules are another favourite. You know, 2004 car, if it's got to that age uh, and mileage and it's on its original door modules is unbelievable, really. Um, every single car with the old level door modules is going to need 900 quid's worth of door modules. Another favourite on the early DB9 would be the transmission cooler and pipe work circuit. Really, on a car that old, you need to see evidence that that has been evolved. You know, about a thousand pounds will do the oil cooler and the pipe work. And then you're on to stuff that you can sort of see yourself. Brakes and tyres. You know, if that car 
at 62,000 miles, 26,500 pounds needed. You know, pretty soon a set of brakes and tires, that's two and a half thousand pounds. And if it's on its original dynamics dampers at 62,000 miles, then a set of four dampers supplied and fitted is probably going to come in at about three and a half thousand pounds. Now, if that car at 62,000 miles is on its original Dynamics dampers. That's going to be driving pretty harsh. Uh, they're going to lost all their damping, refinement and comfort and performance. And although it will pass an MOT, then really it will drive quite harsh and it will need a new set of dampers. So all those repairs come in at about £15,000. Now it's so common for me to see a car for the first time where the new owner has bought it puts it into our workshop, you know, we do a very, very thorough inspection report and it's very common to give the report back with that list of repairs that need doing and that sort of cost. That particular DB9 with 62,000 miles and up at 26,000 pounds is either gonna be one of two things. It's either gonna need a lot of that work doing and then the purchase price at £26,500 doesn't seem that much of a bargain. Or, in recent years, previous owners have done that maintenance, and if you've got the proof of that maintenance, then £26,500 is probably quite a bargain. Unfortunately, most cars tend to have not had the work done, and then when you put them into a professional workshop for the first time and realize how much work it does need doing, the owner gets a bit of a shock. Now we move on to this 2004 DB9. It's got 45,000 miles, and it's up at 34K. Now that car is just as likely to need the exact same list of 15 grand's worth of repairs that I mentioned for the higher mileage car. So in my experience at least, you need to have the pre-purchase inspection or a very recent service with the raw notes that the technician wrote down to properly understand if that 34K car is any better off than the £26,500 car. Which brings us on to this 2008 car at £45,000, but with only 15,000 miles. The low mileage means that it's unlikely to have stone rash paint, and the low mileage also means that the interior is probably like new also. That low mileage probably means that it hasn't pushed the bushes from the wishbone arms out, so it doesn't need eight wishbones. It's unlikely to need a radiator, aircon condenser, aircon compressor. Maybe its door modules function perfectly fine as well. It could be on its original tires or maybe original fronts and the rears have been renewed if the mileage is 15,000. So you really need to check for age deterioration if it is on its original tyres. Don't forget you can find the date stamp on the tyres on the sidewall. You'll have a week number, say 38, and a year number, maybe 15 for 2015. So if those tyres are you know, week 42, 08, then they probably need renewing. Maybe the brakes need renewing because although little use there might be a bit of corrosion on them maybe that got in ground when they were used and maybe the disc surface is poor as a result so whilst that car is unlikely to need all the parts i mentioned due to wear and tear it could need brakes and tires just because of little use so to answer the specific question is it better to buy higher miles lower cost or lower miles higher cost, then if we take the 2004 62,000 mile car at 26 and a half thousand pounds, if it did need that 15 grand's worth of work doing, because they do, a lot of these cars have deferred maintenance year after year because the mileage is low in the owner's hands and they think, well, okay, I'm only going to do a couple of thousand miles this year. I think I can defer component X, Y, and Z. And then all of a sudden, they don't end up ever doing that maintenance. They sell the car. So there are a lot of cars out there that have just had years and years of deferred maintenance. 
So if there is no history to prove what that car has had for its 62,000 miles, what components that I state in my list, whether they've been renewed or not, and if it did need £15,000 spending on it, then you're going to get up to just over 40 all up by the time you've repaired that car. Now maybe you do it piecemeal year after year and eventually you get the car up to a good mechanical state. But the thing here is that at that higher mileage, even if you spent the £15,000 repairing the car, your all up price is going to be about £40,000-£41,000. You'll never end up with as good a car as what you could have got if you bought this lower mileage, higher priced example at £45,000. Obviously buying the car at £45,000 means that you had to have had that budget to start with. And if you choose to buy at £26,000 then that's because that's all budget allows and that's fine. Now we know that we're buying a wearing and tearing car. We don't expect it to be perfect. But what you don't want to be buying for £26,000 is a 15 gram repair bill the moment you put it into a workshop because you drive it and you just get that sense that everything isn't quite right with it. So in summary, get the best paint condition that you can find, get the best interior condition you find and whether it's low mileage or high mileage then either get a pre-purchase inspection done or see the raw inspection notes from its last service that the technician wrote down and not the silly traffic light green amber red with ticks or crosses in them. Hope you like that question of the week. As always, it really helps us if you can subscribe to the channel. Click us a like and comment on your buying experience. Did you buy high miles, low price? Or did you buy high price with low miles? And how did each car work out for you? We'll see you on the next question of the week.